Hello students, today we are going to do the third chapter of the textbook Vistas Journey to the End of the Earth by Tishani Doshi. This lesson, it revolves around the world's most preserved place, Antarctica. Not many people have been there, but out of the few that have, Tishani Doshi is one of them. A South Indian person who went on an expedition with a group of teenagers affiliated with students on ICE program who takes young minds to different ends of the world. Thus, it gives an insight into how Antarctica is the place you should visit to have a glimpse of the past, present and the future in its realist form. So, if you want to know more about the planets, past, present and future, Antarctica is the place to go to. Bon voyage means good journey. Early this year, I found myself aboard a Russian vessel, the Akadmik Shokalsky. Aboard means on a ship, Russian research vessel named Akadmi Shokalsky. It was built in Finland in the year 1982 for polar and oceanographic research. So, author, she talks about her journey to uh, Antarctica and she went there on a Russian research vessel known as Akadmik Shokalsky heading towards the coldest, driest, windiest continent in the world, Antarctica. My journey began 13.09 degrees north of the equator in Madras and involved crossing 9 time zones, 6 checkpoints, 3 bodies of water and at least as many ecospheres. Ecospheres means the region of the universe, especially on Earth, that are capable of supporting life. And time zones, it is the region of the Earth where a common standard time is used and checkpoints are the place on borders. So author, she began her journey from Madras and on her voyage she crossed 9 time zones, 6 checkpoints, 3 water bodies and just as many eco spheres. By the time I actually set foot on the Antarctic continent, I had been traveling over 100 hours in combination of a car, an aeroplane and a ship. So, it took her about 100 hours of combined traveling by car, aeroplane and then a ship to reach the continent. So, my first emotion on facing Antarctica's expansive, expansive means covering a large amount of space. So, expansive white landscape means completely covered with ice and uninterrupted blue horizon was relief followed by followed up with an immediate and profound profound means intense wonder wonder at its immensity means vastness its isolation isolation means separation but mainly at how there could ever have been a time when india and antarctica were part of the same land mass land mass means continent or other large body of land so writer, when she set her uh, foot on the continent, she felt utmost relief for it was all white as far as the eyes could see. The sight of the blue horizon was also very comforting. And next emotion that followed was that of wonderment, amazement. She was astonished by the fact that there was once a time when India and Antarctica were geographically connected. 650 million years ago, a giant amalgamated, amalgamated means merged, united, combined, southern supercontinent, Gondwana. So, Gondwana, it is a huge amalgamated southern supercontinent. It did indeed exist, centered roughly around the present day Antarctica. So, millions of years ago, there was a supercontinent known as Gondwana uh, and it existed around the present day Antarctica. Things were quite different then. So, at, during that time, the situation was completely different from how it is right now. Humans hadn't arrived on the global scene and the climate was much warmer, hosting a huge variety of flora and fauna. So there were no humans and the climate was warmer, which gave rise to huge varieties of flora and fauna. Flora and fauna means plants and animals. 
For 500 million years, Gondwana thrived. Thrived means it flourished, it prospered. But around the time when the dinosaurs were wiped out, dinosaurs were wiped out means they got extinct and the age of the mammals got underway means human beings came into existence. The landmass was forced to separate into countries shaping the globe much as we know it today. So after the extinction of dinosaurs and uh, the coming of human uh, race, this huge continent was forced into segregation to form countries and the world as we know of it today. To visit Antarctica now is to be a part of that history. So according to the author, if one wants to have a glimpse of history and from where we have originated along with where we are headed, Antarctica is the right place. So it says that to be a part of history and get a grasp of where we have come from and where we could possibly heading, it is to under, uh, I mean visiting Antarctica is the right thing to do. It's to, it is to understand the uh, significance of Cordelian folds and pre-Cambrian granite shears. Cordelian folds means extensive chain of mountains or mountain ranges and pre-Cambrian granite shields mean the system of rocks or sedimentary deposits that were found on earth more than 550 million years ago. So we have to understand the significance of these things, ozone and carbon, evolution and extinction. When you think about all that can happen in a million years, it can get pretty mind boggling. So if we think about all these uh, things, the changes that took place, evolution and extinction, uh, Cordelian folds and the granite shields, uh, and if we think that it happened in a million of, million of years, it gets pretty mind boggling means, it is startling, it is overwhelming to know about it. And it says that imagine, India pushing northwards, jamming against Asia to buckle its crust and form the Himalayas. So it says just imagine India is pushing northwards and it is jamming against Asia to buckle. To buckle means to bend or collapse its crust and form the Himalayas. South America drifting off to join North America opening up the Drake Passage to create cold circumpolar current. Drake Passage, it is a strait between Cape Horn and South Shetland Islands that connect Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. To create a cold circumpolar, circumpolar means going around the South Pole region current so that uh, South uh, circumpolar current means which is going around the South Pole that current, cold current is created keeping Antarctica frigid. Frigid means very cold in temperature. Desolate means uninhabited and at the bottom of the world. So it is the best place to research and understand about mountain ranges and low elevation continents, ozone and carbon, evolution and extinction. It is capable of giving an insight of the future and that can be really startling. For a sun worshipping South Indian like myself, two weeks in a place where 90% of the earth's total ice volumes are stored in a, is a chilling prospect, not just for circulatory and metabolic functions, but also for the imagination. Means not only for the physical functions, metabolic means related to the chemical processes that are there in the uh, living beings. So not only that, but also for the imagination. It's like walking into a giant ping pong ball devoid of any human markers. So how it feels that you are walking on a very big huge ping pong ball which is devoid of devoid of means lacking any human markers. Human markers are the, I mean no trees are there, billboards, billboards are 
boards displaying advertisements and buildings you won't find all these things over there you lose all earthly sense of perspective perspective means viewpoint and time here means when you are in antarctica you lose all your earthly sense you lose all your viewpoints and you do not know what the time over there the visual scale it ranges from the microscopic to the mighty microscopic to the mighty means from very small micro things to the mighty to the huge ones like midges and mites midges and mites they are insects that are found in damp places and live on plants and animals to blue whales and icebergs as big as countries and the largest recorded was the size of belgium and other what uh, other uh, things happen over there days go on and on and on in surreal surreal means in a strange unusual way like a dream that is 24 hours austral summer light means continuous summer light in south polar region and a ubiquitous silence ubiquitous means present everywhere so the silence is present everywhere 24 hours continuous summer light is over there which is uh, and the silence is interrupted only by the occasional avalanche avalanche is a mass of snow that slides rapidly down the side of a mountain or carving ice sheets carving means splitting ice sheets consecrates the place consecrates means declares declares the place as sacred it's an immersion immersion means submerge that will force you to place yourself in the context of the earth's geological history and for humans the prognosis isn't good prognosis means the forecast the prediction it is not good so in this paragraph uh, author she said that uh, it is a place where 90% of the earth's total ice volumes are stored and not only biologically or physically difficult but also for imagination and this place is untouched by humans and their in inventions and it gives you an experience that makes you forget about all the other things and from small creatures to huge creatures like blue whales and icebergs as big as countries everything can be found in antarctica days are never ending with sunlight all the time falling on the southern hemisphere it is such a quiet place interrupted only by falling mass of snow rapidly down a mountain it is a setting that force, forces you to ponder upon earth's geological history and helps you foresee future which for humans doesn't seem very pleasant Human civilizations have been around for a paltry 12,000 years. Paltry 12,000 years mean, paltry means insignificant. Barely a few seconds on the geological clock. So human life on earth has been uh, since petty 12,000 years, which converts into few seconds on the geological clock. In that short amount of time, we have managed to create quite a ruckus etching our dominance over nature with our villages towns cities megacities ruckus means chaos noisy disturbance etching our dominance etching means making a clear mark of our dominance over nature how how we have marked our dominance by uh, making all these villages, towns, town, cities, mega cities. So, in merely this less time, humans have managed to exploit each and every resource, thereby creating a chaos in the nature. The rapid increase of human population has left us battling. Battling means struggling with other species for lim limited resources. And the unmitigated, unmitigated burning means complete, 
total unconditional without any limit burning of fossil fuels has now created a blanket of carbon dioxide around the world which is slowly but surely increasing the average global temperature what is fossil it is a remains of animal or a plant which has hardened into a rock so the ever increasing human population is robbing other species of the necessities of for survival and not to forget about the unlimited exploitation of fossil fuels that have created a blanket of carbon dioxide around our planet which is further increasing the average global temperature thus leading to global warming a great threat to our environment climate change is one of the most hotly contested environmental debates of our time so we all know about that global warming and climate change are high priority concern these days will the west antarctic ice sheet melt entirely will the gulf stream ocean current be disrupted will it be the end of the world as we know it maybe maybe not so questions like melting of antarctic sheet disruption of gulf stream ocean and how the world will end still remains unanswered either way antarctica is a crucial element in this debate not just because it's the only place in the world which has never which has never sustained sustained means support a human population and therefore remains relatively pristine pristine means in its original condition unspoiled fresh and clean as if new but more importantly because it holds in its ice cores half million uh, year old carbon records trapped in its layers of ice so here author says that antarctica it it remains an important part not only because it is untouched by humans but also because of the ice cores half million year old carbon records trapped in its layer of ice if we want to study and examine the earth's past present and future antarctica is the place to go So according to the author if one wishes to study and analyze earth's past present and future antarctica is the place to go students on ice the program i was working with on the shukalski aims to do exactly this by taking high school students to the ends of the world and providing them with inspiring educational opportunities which help them foster foster means promote a new understanding and respect for our planet so author she has been in antarctica on an expedition with students on ice a program that takes young minds to the ends of the world which helps in inspiring them to work towards our planet it's been in operation for 6 years now so this program uh, it was started 6 years back and it was headed by canadian geoff green who got tired of carting carting here means transporting or carrying celebrities and retired rich curiosity seekers who could only give back in a limited way so this program it was started with the vision of providing life changing experiences to the future generation of policy makers to learn about the planet at a very early age and the initiative was introduced by geoff green who got tired of his regular job regular job means uh, carrying or transporting all these people who uh, only can only give back in a limited way so with this program he offered the future generation of policy makers a life changing experience at an age where they are ready why on these uh, young students were considered for this uh, mission because they are ready to absorb learn and most importantly act so that is why he started this 
program which takes young minds to the end of the world and helps them inspiring to work towards our planet the reason the program has been so successful is because it's impossible to go anywhere near the south pole and not be affected by it so the program it has been immensely successful in implementing its vision by the way people get affected by seeing the real scenario uh, it's easy to be blaze easy to be blaze means indifferent unconcerned about polar ice caps ice caps means permanent covering of ice especially around north and south poles melting while sitting in the comfort zone of a respective latitude and longitude latitude longitude you know the distance latitude is distance from uh, of a place north or south uh, measured from equator and longitude is distance east or west of the greenwich meridian measured in degrees so what the writer wants to say that it is very easy to sit at home and talk about real issues um, in our respective latitude and longitude means at our places but when you can visibly see glaciers and ice uh, glaciers retreating and ice shells collapsing you begin to realize that the threat of global warming is very real so the writer she tells us that why this program was so successful in implementing its vision because uh, i know it's easy to be unconcerned or it is uh, easy to be indifferent about all these melting ice caps when you are sitting in your comfort zone in your own houses but when you visibly see glaciers retreating means melting and ice shelves ice shelves means uh hi, uh these ice uh, they are collapsing so means they are also melting you begin to realize that the threat of global warming is very real it tells us the very threat of global warming it is uh, real it is true it gives us the glimpse into the future antarctica because of her simple ecosystem ecosystem means the plants and living creatures in a particular area when viewed together with their physical environment envir environs it calls big ecosystem and lack of biodiversity biodiversity means variation among living beings so uh, in antarctica because of a simple ecosystem and it lacks biodiversity it is the perfect place to study how little changes in the environment can have big repercussions repercussions means consequences i mean it's a place where the ecosystem is simple where it lacks biodiversity it lacks uh, living beings then also we can see that how little changes can have big consequences uh, because if we talk about the other places i mean where we are living on the earth i mean we have cause so much of destruction and we can very well see the uh, changes or the destruction that is caused in the environment and antarctica is a place where um, there is no human marker and still the changes can be seen in the environment and which is going which can have big uh, consequences take the microscopic phytoplankton so it right uh, is trying to explain those changes and the repercussions that change is going to have by telling us that take the microscopic phytoplankton phytoplankton means tiny forms of plants and animal life those grasses what are phytoplankton i mean very small forms of plants grasses of the sea that nourish and sustain the entire southern ocean's food chain so it says that nourish that provides nutrition and sustain sustain means hold the entire oceans 
southern oceans food chain mean with the uh, whatever microbes or organism that are there or the creatures that are living in the ocean southern ocean uh, this these phytoplankton they maintain that food chain for them and these single celled plant single celled mean these are functions entirely on single cells what they do they use the sun's energy to assimilate assimilate means absorb carbon and synthesis organic compounds in that wondrous and the most most important of processes called photosynthesis so here uh, writer says that microscopic phytoplankton uh, they are the grasses of the sea and sustain the entire southern ocean's food chain and um, what they do they use the sun's energy to assimilate carbon and synthesize organic compound in that wondrous and most important of processes called photosynthesis but scientists they warn that a further depletion in the ozone layer will affect the activities of phytoplankton which in turn will affect the lives of all the marine animals and birds of the region and the global carbon cycle so uh, the scientists they have concluded that a further depletion in the ozone layer can affect the activities of these single celled plants and affect the marine life altogether in the parable of the uh, phytoplankton parable means short story that teaches of moral so in this story of phytoplankton there is a great metaphor for existence great metaphor metaphor is imaginative usage of phrase uh, to describe something through comparison so uh, writer here wants us to uh, tell us or wants to compare this situation uh, by saying that take care of the small things and the big things will fall into place so this statement it holds great importance in context of the antarctic environment uh, as we read the phytoplanktons in the region they serve as food for marine birds and animals and the depletion of the ozone layer affects the phytoplanktons and the carbon cycle and this can obstruct the existence of marine life so if the process carried on by these small grasses is taken care of the processes of the bigger animals and birds can be taken care of walk on the ocean next my antarctic experience was full of such epiphanies epiphanies means memorable memories so uh, the antarctic experience of author it is full of memorable memories but the best occurred just short of the antarctic circle at 65.55 degrees south so the best memory is uh, it happened just short of the antarctic circle the shukalski had managed to wedge herself into a thick wide stretch of ice between uh, the peninsula and the dead pole so here uh, the writer she wants to say the best experience she had when she was at the antarctic circle of 6 at 65.55 uh, degrees south and shukalski it had uh, managed to wedge wedge means to squeeze into narrow space herself into a thick white stretch stretch uh, of the stretch means spread of ice between the peninsula peninsula is area surrounded by water joined to large uh, a piece of land and tedpole island which was preventing preventing means hindering us from going any further the captain decided we were going to turn around and head back north but before we did we were all instructed to climb down the gangplank gangplank is a movable wooden plank for going into or out of a ship and walk on the ocean 
so there we were all 52 of us kitted out kitted out means equipped with clothing or equipment means they were provided all the uh, equipment that were needed over there uh, so kitted out in Gore-Tex Gore-Tex means special ice boots and glares glares uh, here means the eye shades or you can say the glasses walking on a stark stark means complete whiteness that seemed to spread out forever underneath our feet was a meter thick ice pack and underneath that 180 meters of living breathing salt water in the periphery periphery means boundary crab eater seals crab eater seals uh, were stretching and sunning sunning means lying in sun themselves on ice flows ice flows means large snow of floating ice so on that they were sunning themselves how just like stray dogs will do under the shade of a banyan tree and it was nothing short of revelation revelation means disclosing everything does indeed connect so uh, it was the best experience of um, our writer Tishani Doshi and she talks about when she uh, reached Antarctic Circle and uh, the captain decided to turn back but before that he instructed all these people to climb down the gangplank and walk on the ocean walk on the ocean because it was uh, frozen and all these 52 they were kitted out in Gore-Tex in ice boots and uh, sunglasses to walk on complete white surface that seemed to spread out everywhere and beneath their feet was a meter thick ice pack and underneath was uh, living breathing salt water means on the surface it was ice and below that ice was salt water and in the periphery periphery means on the outskirts on the outer limits crab eater seals crab eater seals they are uh, seals you have seen and they eat crab they were stretching and sunning uh, sunning means uh, enjoying the sunshine on ice flows ice flows i told you large areas of floating ice and they were enjoying like the stray dogs enjoy under the shade of a banyan tree and it was nothing short of a revelation everything does indeed connect nine time zones six checkpoints three bodies of water and many ecospheres later i was still wondering about the beauty of balance in play on our planet how would it be if antarctica were to become the warm place that it once used to be will we be around to see it or would we have gone the way of the dinosaurs mammoths and woolly rhinos who's to say but after spending two weeks with a bunch of teenagers who still have the idealism to save the world, all I can say is that a lot can happen in a million years, but what a difference a day makes. So here, uh, it took author to travel from Madras to Antarctica, nine time zones, checkpoints and various bodies of water, but still author, she pondered upon the capability of nature to maintain its balance. She wondered what it would be like if Antarctica, the place that houses over 90% of world's ice, becomes warm again. She wonders if we will be there to see if it ever happens, but who knows. Thus, by seeing the spirit of teenagers who still are left with the courage to save the world, she talks about the uncertainty of events that can happen over a million years. So with this, we come to an end of this chapter. Uh, let us discuss the question answers. The world's geological history is trapped in Antarctica. How is the study of this region useful to us? It uh, 
I mean, this ge geological phenomena of separation of the landmass into various continents and water bodies almost 650 million years ago, it marks the beginning of the human race on the earth and mammals started existing after dinosaurs became extinct, which happened once the landmass separated. What are Geoff Green's reason for including high school students in the Students on Ice expedition? He took school students on expedition to one end of the earth to make them realize the impact that human intervention could have on nature. He wanted the future policy makers to experience how difficult it would be to sustain life with the rising temperatures. He wanted them to see the melting ice shells so that they could estimate the trouble that mankind was headed to. Take care of small things and the big things will take care of themselves already discussed. Why is Antarctica the place to go to to understand the Earth's present, past and future? Because it gives us an idea of how the Earth was millions of years ago. The melting sheets of ice give us an idea of the future also. So with this, we come to an end of this chapter. Thank you.